from a secret studio located deep inside the Arc de Triomphe, I think I said that right, monument, it's the Miraculous News Network with Linda Lee Rose. Hey guys, today I'm chatting with the one and only Dean and Melody. In the world of Miraculous Voice Actors, she can be heard as Kalaki the Horse Kwame, Mulo the Mouse Kwame, as well as one of the newest characters in the series, Zoe Lee. Zoe, of course, is the half-sister to Chloe Bourgeois, and also Zoe's miraculous hero of Vesperia. And she joins us here today. So, hi, Deenan. Uh, we have never met before, and this is our first interview together, so I'd love to just, like, get to know you a bit and uh, get to know, like, about your career, maybe how you got into voice acting, and some of the other, I guess, like, anime projects that you've done and are working on besides Miraculous. Let's see. I actually started off as a dancer. I was a professional dancer for a long, long time. Wow. Ballet. Yeah. Down in Houston and then up in Chicago and stuff. I did ballet. Um, lots of dancing. That's what I thought I was going to do. Unfortunately, I had an injury. And that kind of, yeah, and it happens, you know. And that kind of caused me to have to step back and reevaluate, like, what what do I want to do and what can I do? I was a performer. I know that I love to perform. Yeah. And so, you know, it took several years. I did film. I did theater. I did some circus training, like, you know, aerial stuff. Oh, everything. cool. Yeah. And... I had always wanted to do voiceover because I was one of those like kids growing up and teenagers that I would kind of mute like the shows or like mute my video games and kind of do the voice the voices yeah with it you know and I've been such a big anime and animation and video game fan for so long that I think deep down there was a part of me that always wanted to do it I just didn't yeah know how to get into it yeah and um when I moved to Los Angeles I was starting to meet more people who were doing voiceover and it kind of clicked that oh yeah Deneen you love cartoons you love video games you love anime this is something you can actually do now and so I you know started taking classes I I met people you know and before I knew it, I had my first gig, and it just has built from there. And yeah, yeah I mean, I do a lot of anime, uh, which I love. I could talk about anime all day. Me um, too. Anime yeah, anime is great. It's so much fun. And what people don't really know is that it's one of the harder um, forms of voiceover. Anything yeah. Anything that requires dubbing, which also like Ladybug is a dub because we're dubbing over like the, the French. Um, it's really difficult. Like you have yeah. to match lip flaps and all of that stuff. So yeah, but that's me in a nutshell. I was just, you know, a little country girl who did ballet and then eventually got into VO. And here I am yeah. talking with you now. <laughs> so I'm curious if you were like a fan of Miraculous before joining the cast. So like, have you heard of it or known a fellow voice actor who was already on it? Yes. Before I was ever on Miraculous, before I met Ezra, before I was cast as Kalki, who was my first role, I had actually met the voice actor for Chloe on another like a film set we were doing a web series <laughs> that's and, so cool oh my gosh yes. and it was so cute because she was kind of playing like the little diva on set on in the show and then i was playing kind of the person that was like following her around which you know now we kind of have that dynamic yeah She's chloe and i'm zoe but um i met her and she had just got cast and started recording miraculous and she was so excited and she told me all about it. And this was again years, like a couple of years before I even started doing voiceover. I was just like, you know, and it came up because I was talking to her about how much I wanted to do VO. And she's like, yeah. oh, well, I just got cast in, in, in this show called Miraculous. She was showing me on her phone photos and stuff of it. And it got me really excited because I loved shows like Winx Club and Witch. <laughs> 
in all of those shows growing up yeah. when I was a teenager. And it really kind of gave me that vibe. And yeah. I got into it. I started, you know, like looking into it online and watching it. And then, yeah, I, I worked with Ezra on a show called Megalobox. And he was the director and I was doing Walla, <laughs> which is Walla is basically all the background um, voices that you hear. And so I was yeah. doing Walla on that show and he just really liked me. We connected. He liked my voice and thought it would work really well for Ladybug and brought me in to do Walla for Ladybug. And then from there, I got Kalki and it was just like, here I am. I, I love this show and now I'm working on it but I had auditioned for a few characters um, since I had gotten Kalki. And I had always wanted to voice, you know, as much as I love the Kwamis, because I do love them, I always wanted to voice like one of the human characters, like a superhero or something like yeah. that. I wanted to voice one of those characters, one of the students. Then I guess Zoe came along and they just told me, they were like, you know, this is your character. We've, yeah. you know, you've been auditioning. We, you know, I've been working with them. They know my voice very well. And yeah, Ezra's like, we're going to have you be Chloe's sister. Deneen, how excited are you to be the voice of Zoe? I am so excited. I love her so much. I've been wanting to voice like one of the characters. I mean, I'm the Kwamis, but right. to be one of the students. Yes. I've oh, been, a you, human being. You know this. I've been wanting it. And then she popped up and we were like, she's Perfect. And I was like, you are yes! perfect. You have to voice her. And I you do. So yes. And I remember like, because, you know, knowing online and stuff like that, and all of the theories and everything, I kind of put it together that, oh, Chloe's sister, that must be this girl that everybody's talking about who might possibly be the queen, the new queen bee. So you're Zoe, blonde hair, blue eyes. Good. So far, you're measuring up to the family standards. You can make an acceptable sister, physically at least. So yeah, and so that's that's how I got it. So while I didn't technically audition for Zoe, um, I had auditioned several times for other characters within the show and within the Zag universe. And yeah, I think you know we were all just waiting for the right character, and I was so excited. I love her so much. Like the moment I walked in and started recording her. It just like all clicked together. I, yeah. I feel for her so much. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, she's so cute and so sweet. Yeah. And yeah. it just goes to show, um, and that's happened several times with different projects. I always tell people, you never know what's going to happen. If yeah. you, you just never know. It may seem like impossible, but these things happen. So remember that it's possible. So a couple of years ago, I was at the Zag offices shooting a segment and I got to see your character's design like way early. And um, when I later posted on social media that I was like at the offices and saw lots of cool things for season four, uh, including a possible secret sibling, I think I broke the internet for a while because <laughs> Miraculous fans were like going crazy and have had to patiently wait for two years to see who I was talking about. It has been a while. That's yeah. true. Um, actually, throughout the past couple of years, people would like make comments to me and be like, maybe you'll get to voice this i know that it was like something about people knew that there might be a new queen bee you know like that thing and they're like maybe you'll be the new queen bee yeah you know and and stuff like that and that lasted for a couple of years i remember even just like when all of that came out there there i have a friend who's a big fan and she she was saying stuff like that and i was like i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> it was way too soon you know so yeah you definitely did break the internet but in a good way yeah yeah, yeah, in a very good way. <laughs> As you may have found out, there's a lot of like relationship pairing by fans, which is also like shipping. Uh, so have you found a ship that you like yet? And what are your thoughts of fans already wanting to ship Luca and Zoe into uh, Luca Zoe or Zoeika? I think that's Zoeika. what he said. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like Zoeika. That's cute. So I admit that when I first, so I love Luca. 
I love Luca. I think Luca Me is too. sweet. He's adorable. Yeah. So, isn't he? I knew you had good taste. I can tell. <laughs> So sweet, like kind of more like when I was in high school, I probably would have been more into like Luca, you know, than Adrian. But I just think he's such a great character. And so, okay, when I first saw Zoe, I didn't even get to like really see her because we don't get to see the finished product when we're yeah. recording. So I didn't really know exactly what she looked like, but I got an idea and she was so sweet. And I know, you know, Things weren't really going well with Mari and, and Luca. And I was like, oh, maybe they would be a good couple. You know, Zoe and Luca. And so I did think that pretty early on. <laughs> I like, oh, I mean, just like with their aesthetics and their personalities, I think like Luca could really do well with a very nice girl. You know, yeah. somebody who's very sweet. Aside from that, like I... I really think Zoe could be with anybody, you know, on this show. I think she's yeah. a very loving girl. I, I, you know, some people talked about her and Mari, um, Marina, and I was that's yeah. I was thinking about that too. Like I was like, wait a second. I like that too, and in my opinion, my opinion, everybody, I'm looking to the, to the camera for this one too. My opinion, as like when I was doing those scenes, was she might have a little crush on her. I think that's what I think yeah. too. She was definitely flirting with Marinette. <laughs> Bye. See you tonight then. Yes, Here exactly. Talking. So I like that idea too. Although we know, we know, you know, Marinette has Adrian and everything. Yeah fingers crossed but I do think you know she has a little crush there and so yeah yeah I like that idea too a lot so when people ask me like what do I prefer which ship um I like I like Luke Zoe or Zoe Zoe Luca what I like whatever it was that you yeah. said <laughs> I like that I like the idea of it and I do like the idea of Zoe having a crush on Marinette because it just seems so cute and pure and yeah. really genuine. Like when I was doing the scene, I was like, I feel this. I feel yeah. this. <laughs> and like, if like, let's just say like, okay, well, let's just say, for example, okay, what if Zoe did have a crush on Marinette? And Zoe was like, hi, I have a crush on you. Or she just confessed. And if Marinette just like, I guess, turned her down, obviously Zoe and Marinette would just be so nice about it too. I know. Like that's why I think their dynamic would work really well too. Yeah, and you know what? That's actually a really I would love to see something like that happen in the show yeah. too. To show that, you know, and you kind of do see that within the characters, but to see it with like those two characters in particular. Yeah. To show that, you know, even if crushes and that sort of thing don't work out that you can still be, be really nice good about friends. it yeah yeah and still work together as superheroes yeah I and like that. that's why i love like this show so much because you can see like how much representation like like queer representation is actually yes. in the show like yes. julica and rose everyone knows that they're dating like that's oh, i love it they literally yes. shared an ice cream at andre's uh ice cream it's place so, so yeah yeah. And for for me it's it I I think it's very important. Um you know, I I like to see that representation and I like to push it forward because Me too. So, yeah. Yeah, there's so many um so many people myself included who are in that community and we feel it's it's so important to have that. And so when people ask me, you know, well, do you think that Zoe likes Marnette? Absolutely. I yeah. Do. I do. And again, I have to say that it's not canon because I don't it's, know. Yeah. It's not like confirmed, you know? So, yes. yeah. But if you're asking me as the, as the English voice actress for her and how I felt doing those scenes and how I feel whenever Zoe is around her, that's, that is how I feel. So. Yeah. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Who knows what Zag is going to do? So fans are already wanting to know like more about the backstory on Zoe, but will we eventually find out where she's from and maybe who her father is? Like, I have some theories on who her father could be, um, and like more about her background, but I actually don't know. Yeah. And 
they may never, you know, it may be one of those things where they don't ever tell us because it's、mm-hmm. not crucial to the story. Yeah, it might just、know. not be relevant to the plot, you know? Yeah, whoever her father is may not be. Important to what is going on in the world, and that doesn't make Zoe any less important, you know. It's yeah, just maybe that part who knows, but yeah, sorry guys, I actually have no idea. Uh, and we're all like watching season four right now. But how long ago did you actually record your lines for Zoe for this current season? And have you already started like recording lines for season five and six yet? We do record at least a couple of months in advance. So, and the first episode that I recorded was actually Queen Banana. So, you know, <laughs> that's interesting that I actually recorded that one first. And we did that like several months before it was ever aired. And that's usually how it goes, you know. You、yeah. record, and then <laughs> sometimes, like me, I'll forget what I recorded, and then it comes out, and I'm like, oh yeah, that. Um, as far as season five and onward, mm, I, know. <laughs> I know, and I know, guys. Trust me, I'm gonna look in the camera for this one too. I know it's so like you want to know. I totally get it. I'm so sorry. I love you guys though, anyway. <laughs> And the fandom wants to know if, like, we will see Zoe in the upcoming Miraculous movie. You probably can't tell us if she is or not. I hope so. I mean, I think at least at the, you know, at the very least, maybe she'll be in it a little bit.、Um, I think just like with any of the students, like in the school and the、yeah. class. I mean, that's what I would hope for. I really hope that she's in it, just because again, it looks so beautiful, and yeah. So, but I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. You also voice Mulo the mouse Kwame and Kalki the horse Kwame. For the fans, can you please give us、uh, like a sample of both your characters' voices for Zoe, Mulo, and Kalki, so they can hear how you do it normally behind the microphone? Yes. Let's start with Mulo because Mulo is a lot of fun. Mulo, I usually push her all the way up into my to like kind of my nasal area and really high pitched because she's a little mouse. So she's Mulo. Get squeaky. You only have to say one thing. Mulo, get squeaky. Mulo, get squeaky. So That's adorable. She's so cute.、Yeah. I got cast as Mulo、um, a little bit after, you know, I had already been Kalki, and then they were like, "We're gonna give you the mouse Kwame," and I was like, "Yes," because you would always see her in the background, and I'd always be like, "She's so cute." Yeah. So, yeah, that's Mulo. So for Kalki, we wanted to give her a higher voice because she's a tiny little fairy horse, and then we wanted her just like looking at her. She seems so like. Ugh, so posh and and everything. So we're like, let's give her a slight British accent. And when I saw her, she gets a lot of comparisons to Rarity.、Um, I I can I see that. Yes. I, oh my gosh! I wow. I did、I'm、not a, ever think about that. <laughs> yes. I'm a My Little Pony fan, and Rarity is one、Thank、of my、you. favorites. Rarity and Fluttershy. So I looked at her, and I was like, she totally gives me Rarity vibes. So. Let's make Kalki a little bit more here, and so she's Kalki full gallop, and she's so、uh, very posh and proper. And yes, you got that fire department on horseback. Horse? She means you, Kalki. I am not a horse. I am a noble steed. I was the companion to the most glorious heroes. She might be talking about fluff. Of course. This is kind of interesting. You can see the difference when between the two Kwamis. Like when I'm Mulo, I'm really up here, and I do a lot of stuff up here with my hands and my body. It's all very energetic because she's energetic. When I do Kalki, I drop everything a little bit and kind of keep my eyes rolled back every time I deliver any lines. There's a villain in Paris, and the Guardian can't go and take care of it right now. Sorry, Mr. Noir, about your room. Don't worry, Kalki. Ladybug will fix everything later. Because it helps you get into character. So、yeah. you change your voice, and you change. It's not just changing your voice. You're changing how you present your it. Your whole yeah.、Exactly. Like I was just gonna say, like voice acting is like 
visual acting as well you know exactly because this is what i will tell anybody who's wanting to get into voiceover that like it's not just about doing voices you have to really commit and even though you're in a booth behind a mic, you're still playing that character. You like know? you like get in a whole stance and everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then you asked about Zoe. Zoe is actually the easiest for me because I was basically asked and was cast because they like my natural voice. Mm -hmm. So and they wanted that for Zoe. And so the only difference is, is because she is younger um, than myself, <laughs> I kind of bring her voice not higher. Her voice isn't higher. It's just more colorful, if that makes more sense. Kind of more mm -hmm. like a clearer tone. So Zoe is up here. She's just up here, you know, and she tries to be really sweet because and she's really, um, a little insecure, you know, especially when she meets everybody. Really sorry about today. I thought that if I did everything Chloe wanted me to, then she'd accept me. I just wanted to meet my family's expectations, which is why I left New York in the first place. At the boarding school, I was playing a part, being someone else, hoping they'd accept me. Then when she becomes Vesperia, she's really energetic and confident because she has, you know, that all of that like power and confidence and yeah. she realizes how awesome she is so you know her voice is more like um pollen buzz on so she's very confident and very like superhero magical girl you know anime <laughs> hey you big eight how about fighting someone your own size Venom! Yeah. And so, yeah, the difference is, is when I'm Zoe, she's, she does get a little bit more confidence, you know, as she goes on, but she's down here a little bit more, um, very unsure of everything, trying to be polite to everybody. But then when she becomes Vesperia, she's up here because she's so just like, yes, I'm a superhero. <laughs> when I go in and I'm Zoe, I relate to her a lot. So she's really easy to just kind of fall into, you know, as soon yeah. as I get the scripts and I go in and record, I'm always like, oh, yeah, okay, I got this. I know how, <laughs> this, how she's feeling. You're an actor, so you probably get this. You can always find something about a character that you get cast as. And I mm -hmm. always tell people, even if you get cast, whether it is film, TV, theater, um, voiceover, no matter what you get cast in, if you feel like you don't relate to a character, if you're like, ugh, I just can't, I, I'm so not this character, really look into it because I'm sure you can find something about that character, even if it's one thing that you can actually really relate to, whether it's you relate to them as a person or maybe an experience that you both share, you know? Yeah. And it helps so much. It helps you really connect. And it's important to be able to connect to a character. Voyage! So one fan wanted to know, since Kalki has the power of teleportation, if in real life you had the power to teleport anywhere in the world you wanted, where would the first place be that you would teleport to? I am Scottish. And I, my family is Scottish, and I had gotten to dance in Scotland um, years and years and years ago, and I absolutely fell in love with it, and I've always wanted to go back. So, no hesitation, I would teleport to Scotland and just run around in the Highlands, you know, <laughs> just with the wind and the the beautiful gray skies and just pretend that I'm like some wild Scottish fairy because it's <laughs> I'm not even joking like seriously um that's that's where I would love to travel to and just spend a good amount of time there no hesitation so Scotland what are the similarities that like you find between you and Zoe we're very similar in that we're both very like artsy people and I constantly even at my age I'm in my 30s and I still draw on my shoes 
<gasps> I, I do. Wow, your sneakers are awesome. Did you decorate them yourself? Yeah, I've written every nice thing that anyone's ever said to me to keep them with me all mm. the time. But there's only one message. I only had one friend. I should probably, yeah, I should take a picture and show people. I still draw on my shoes. So I'm like, I, that would have been me. And that was me in high school. That was totally me in high school. You draw on your shoes too? Yeah. Yeah! Well, I don't draw on these ones because they're black platforms and I don't want to. Oh, them. those are so cool. I do think typically I'm a little bit more higher energy and a little bit more naturally like feisty than Zoe. But yeah. what I relate to her, you know, is that I did have a hard time growing up in school. I was a bit of an outcast. I had friends, but I didn't really have like super, super close friends, but I didn't have anybody that I could really like, felt like family or anything like that. Yeah. And I was kind of the weird artsy kid that I did ballet and I was traveling to Houston and I was like, you know, and all of this stuff and everybody would always be like, oh, she's the dancer girl. She's mm -hmm. the dancer girl. And then I was doing theater and people were just always like, she's weird. So I relate to that with Zoe because I know what it's like to be like a 14 um, year old girl and feeling like nobody really likes you and kind of feeling out of place yeah. and yeah I know what that feels like and I know what it feels like to try to you know like she does with Chloe she and her family she tries to fit in because mm -hmm. she being herself doesn't seem to to work with the people that she wants it to work with and I feel like a lot of us kind of have experienced that, especially as young people, when we're, you know, preteens and teenagers, we, we're trying to experiment and figure ourselves out. So sometimes we'll kind of change who we are to try to fit in, yeah. you know, and we're not meant to fit in sometimes, and that's okay. Um, I also relate to her with her relationship with Chloe, because I am the youngest of eight kids, so there's a lot of us. Wow. But yes. So by the time I was born, I am so much younger than all of my sisters that there's always been a bit of a disconnect there. And me wanting to be close to my sisters, you know, and so it's different while Zoe and Chloe are closer in age, they still have, you know, that disconnect with each other. They they have this kind of relationship that's kind of just like, ugh. Because you know, they're both like extremely different. They're extremely yeah. different. Um, I think that they're the way that they were raised and their ex life experiences were completely different. And I have I can relate with that. I hate you. You may hate me, but I love you, and I always will, even if the whole world hates you, sister. <sighs> Remember, we have the same mother. You know, that scene at the end of Queen Banana, like, you know, not that I would ever have that exact conversation with any of my sisters. And like, I'm really close to one of my sisters now. She's so cool. But just having that thing of like wanting to be close and have a sister, you know, and still kind of feeling that weirdness, like, mm -hmm. yeah. So I can relate to how her relationship with um, Chloe probably feels. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous! Do you want another banana, Chloe? Like, Chloe with her utterly ridiculous catchphrase. Um, does Zoe have a catchphrase? And if not, what do you think would be, like, a good expression for Zoe? I don't know! Why don't you guys come up with one? If enough people can come up with a good catchphrase for Zoe, I'll record it and post it on TikTok. How about that? That's smart. Good idea. Yeah. I challenge, I challenge everyone, come up with, with a catchphrase for, for Zoe, and I'll record it. That's good. Maybe it'll um, get into the show. Yeah. Queen Banana, you're not even capable of a fair fight with the new holder of the Bee Miraculous. How dare you? I'm the one and only Queen Bee. Oh, you were. But I am the real Queen Bee now. There's a lot of pushback from diehard Chloe fans that now you have the Be Miraculous. 
I love Chloe and Zoe, but like at yeah. first I was kind of like, ooh, I don't know how I feel about Zoe having the miraculous. You know what? There was a lot of pushback. Yeah. Um, there's still a lot of pushback. And what I want to say about that is I absolutely understand, guys. Yeah. Like, believe me, it is not lost on me. I know exactly how you feel because I love Chloe. Yeah. I think Chloe is a great character. I completely, yeah. and this is why I always, you know, on my TikTok, every once in a while, I'll have somebody come and leave a message where they're like, you seem nice, but I hate Zoe. And I'm like, it's okay. You don't have to like Zoe. I understand. It's very strange to go from one character and you're used to one character having something and then it just kind of like being changed, you know, yeah. like that. I totally get it. I hate you, Ladybug, and you, Vesperia. You're only a fake version of Queen Bee. I know with Chloe's arc and everything like that. So as far as I'm concerned, I just want people to know that, like, I understand. People ask me, do I think Chloe, will she get the Bee Miraculous again? I don't know. But there's always a possibility that she might. Yeah. And... I, I always tell people what I would personally like to see is somehow that the two sisters find a way to share the Be Miraculous. And I would love to see That would be adorable. Like if be like adorable, yes. If Chloe and Zoe, like, found a way to, like, be friends, you know, and, yes. and help each other out. Exactly. I feel like Chloe is an important character to the show because she might be an a an exaggerated version but there are people who are like that that we have in our lives and especially you know again these are all their young their kids basically they're yeah. teenagers and it makes sense for them to be feeling all sorts of ways and reacting all sorts of ways i also want to say i did i have seen some theories about zoe being possibly a bad person again i don't i don't know but what i can say from just voicing her and from what i do know of the character she honestly is just a sweet person guy she's misunderstood Z zoe is not some bad person like she's not as far as i'm concerned and again this i don't know because things can always change you know but I, I have not been given any clues or anything like that, that Zoe is some type of, you know, bad person or anything like that. She's actually just a, she's a sweet yeah. girl. Um, I don't think she's perfect. People are like, oh, she's come in and she's so perfect. Zoe's not perfect, guys. She's She's definitely not perfect. She's trying her best to be everyone's, uh, to yes. get on everyone's good side and be everyone's, like, dream person. Like, because I can kind of relate to that. Like, sometimes, like... Yes. I used to do this like I would just like change my personality every single time one of my friends like yes. would just kind of be honest with their feelings about me and I'd just be like oh and then I'd be like okay then and then I'd just completely change my personality and I'd be like oh time to figure out another personality exactly. that's what Zoe is like you know she's just trying to like figure out how to be like everyone's like ideal good person that's something to really look at she's she's not perfect she's trying just like you said she's trying to make everybody happy and the truth is you can't make everybody happy and yeah. i do think she's gotten better about it which is good and yeah i think zoe is also an important part of the story just like chloe is i think that she is there and will hopefully make a positive impact on chloe's life and that Chloe will make a positive impact on Zoe's life. I think both of them in a way could really benefit with having yeah. a nice, healthy, you know, sisterly relationship with each other. I would like to see them eventually work together and work things out. And hopefully by the end of the show, whenever that is, it could be seasons and seasons, you know, from now that they become good friends. And I think it's just going to take, especially Chloe, some time because she, you know, we know her past and we know how her mother treats her and everything, mm -hmm. how insecure Chloe is. It might just take some time for her to really be open and accepting that somebody really wants to have a relationship with her and loves her. And yeah, I think that's very beautiful. And I have my fingers crossed that that's going to happen because I do think that that is what Chloe needs. I agree. I think she needs to just really accept and know that somebody 
actually loves her and wants to have a close and healthy relationship mm -hmm. with her. If you really stop and you look at it, both girls are very insecure. It's mm -hmm. how they present and handle themselves that is different. Chloe, again, is very, she's very out there and very like, she kind of owns it because, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, like you said, she's like, well, I'm rich and pretty, so I'll just use that as a mask you know, for how I'm yes. really feeling, which is insecure and unloved. Mm -hmm. And then you have Zoe who also feels insecure and unloved. And I think exactly. that even though she's made friends with like Mari and everybody, that type of stuff doesn't go away like that. Like it can take some time. And I think even now yeah. she's still a little insecure, but how she handles it is like you were saying, she kind of tries to, you know, please everybody by being what she thinks people want them to be. So exactly what you were saying, Chloe just is who she is. She's going to be like, I'm going to be this person. And everybody has to just accept it. Whereas Zoe is like, no, I'm going to try to be a different person for everybody and try to make them yeah. happy. And, but there's still, it all comes from the same place, which is insecurity and feeling unloved and unwanted. And that's really sad. Exactly. That's why, yeah, that's again why I don't like to pit them against each other because you have two young girls. And remember guys, they're young. They're, they're very young teenagers. I wouldn't want to pit two, you know, 14 year old sisters or however old they, they actually are against each other. I would want to see growth there. What do you think about all of the like fan art that has already been made for the character of Zoe? Oh, I love it. I love it. I always tell everybody to please tag me, please fan art. I also love all of the video reels that people make. I love all of the cosplays. I love them. They make me so happy. So, and if you follow me on Instagram, I love to post them in my stories. Every, every single artwork that I've seen has been, you know, so sweet and touching. And I can always feel how much people love the character, you know. So, yeah. Everybody, if you have fan art or if you want to draw fan art of Zoe, even of Kalki and Mulo, please feel free to tag me. Even if I don't see it right away. Let me know, leave a comment. You know, I always love to see them. They make, they absolutely make my day. <laughs> absolutely. And uh, speaking of fan art, there's been like a lot of fan art already created by Miraculers. So would you do the honor of introducing the fan art segment? Absolutely. So everybody, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the various Zoe fan art from Miraculers all over the world. Here we go. <laughs> And now it's time for some utterly, ridiculously fantastic, miraculous fan art. So, uh, yeah, if Miraculers, like, want to follow you on social media, where can they find you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok? Okay, so it's pretty easy because everything is just my name. So on Instagram, I'm Deneen Melody. That's D-E-N-E-E-N-M-E-L-O-D-Y, Deneen Melody. Um, same thing on Twitter um, and same thing on TikTok. So on all three of those, you can find me. Um, I'm trying to get better about TikTok. TikTok is, 
I'm getting a little used to it. It's <laughs> it's different. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot, but um, I I tend to be um pretty active on Twitter, um, just because it's the easiest. You can just like you know type something on your phone, and then there it is. And then um, yeah. So feel free to follow me. And again, if anybody, I'm gonna look in the camera again. I keep forgetting to look at the camera. I keep looking at at you're just so lovely. Um, <laughs> if you just want to follow me again, Deneen Melody. D-E-N-E-E-N-M-E-L-O-D-Y. Yeah. We're all one big happy family. You'll be fine with us. You'll never have to leave again, Zoe. Welcome to Paris. Okay, well, Deneen, thank you so much again for talking to, for like taking the time to talk to me. Um, and hopefully we'll get a chance to meet in person one day. And yeah, so I then. I love that. And Lindley, you are seriously fantastic. Like, I'm not just saying that. You have a great presence. You're very easy to talk to. And I'm I'm very honored to do this with you. Thank you so much. And bug out. Bye. (laughs) Here, I'm trying to leave the meeting. There we go. And that will do it for this episode of the Miraculous News Network. Let's let Zag know how much you love the MNN so we can keep on making more of these for you. Please be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and share it with any fellow family, friends, and fans who love Miraculous. Because remember, there is no MNN without you. The F-A-N. Until next time, I'm Lindley Rose. Thanks for joining me and have a miraculous day, everyone. And bug out!